All right, welcome along. Uh, my name's DJ Bosch, and I just wanted to start a series doing some music production stuff within Ableton from the complete beginning. So a lot of what I see on YouTube for tutorials, loads of great stuff out there if you want to learn things, but not a lot of stuff for people who are completely beginning, starting out, completely fresh to the program. So each one of these episodes is just going to be explanations on some real basic stuff that I kind of wish I'd have known when I started producing. So today we're going to look at doing build-ups, um, anything you can use running towards the drop of a tune. We'll also do it backwards, so you can use it for a breakdown as well, so to lead out of another section. Uh, but yeah, let's just get straight into it. I'm going to use all the stock Ableton plugins as well. I'm going to try and not use anything that you wouldn't have that comes with Ableton Suite. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. We're going to use Operator for this one, drag it onto an empty mini ch MIDI channel. Also, it might be worth mentioning, this is the first time I've done this audio setup, so I don't know how the mic's sounding. I have no idea how the video's looking, so hopefully it works out all right. Okay, so first thing, we've got an operator here, completely blank. And the first thing you're going to do is take your first oscillator here, oscillator 1, and change the wave type to white noise. So this is now going to create a noise that's a little bit like what, you'd use, what you used to hear on a TV when the TV wasn't working, and it's... Basically, every frequency played all at the same time. Let's have a listen. Cool. Now, it doesn't matter if I play this down low or up high. There's no note difference. So you can click in a MIDI track here. Little MIDI section. Let's change the length down here. Let's change that to four. So that gives us four bars. And now, what you want to do is just draw in a four bar long MIDI note. Perfect. Let's have a listen. It'll sound exactly the same, but now it lasts four bars. You get the idea. So, <clears throat> let's address this like we're using it in a proper track. So I'm going to take my clip here. And I'm just going to drag it into the arrangement view. Ooh, looks like I've already got one there. Let's double that and make it a bit longer so it's eight bars long. And now, what you want to do is, firstly, make sure there's no little red button here. Oh, what have I done? So, there's usually, why won't that go back to the start? If you've been playing things from the loop view, whatever it's called, I can't remember what they call that view. If you've been playing stuff in there, there'll be a little red box here. You want to click that and turn it off. Because what that's doing is allowing you to hear what's on this screen and not on the loop view, I'm going to call it. I can't remember what that's called for the life of me. So, we've got our long white noise. Now what you want to do is take something called the auto filter from your audio effects. So let's drag this in here, no preset required, just drag it straight on. And you'll see this kind of looks like an EQ. This is a very simple EQ that can be really easily used with automation to create effects and stuff. So it's the perfect tool for this thing. If you wanted to, you could use um, an EQ, but I just find it's a bit easier for this type of thing with the automation to use the auto filler. So let's put it on the notch setting. This notch setting here, that's the middle one, that's going to give us a, a block of EQ right in the middle there. Let's click it and see what happens. All right, see, we've got this triangle now. So what we can do, let's play our sound, and we're just going to play around with this triangle, this little uh, EQ section here. So you can really easily see what's going on there. <clears throat> yep, already starting to sound like something you might hear before a drop. So let's automate it now. Um, something again I wish I'd have picked up a bit sooner was learning proper automation skills. So we're going to right click on this filter frequency. Now what you could do is you could click on any of these knobs here any pretty much any control any parameter in Ableton in any instrument or effect you can draw automation for so let's go to the frequency and that's what controls this the side to side motion of this auto filter here and let's go to show automation all right so now you notice here it says we're automating the, the filter and we're automating the frequency of the filter so these you can if you know what you're doing you can sort of click in any of these change the operator the mixer and then you can change all these settings that are within the auto filter as well. But let's stick with frequency for now. 
we're going to draw a little block here, a little circle there, and take that right down to the bottom. And then we're going to go to the right hand side and take it right up to the top. And let's have a listen. Let's just stop that and... Perfect. And I mean, that's pretty much it for that one. Um, you can start, you can add things like, you could add a phaser for a little bit more effect there. Let's see how this sounds. I usually just like to put it not quite at the top, somewhere, put it in the middle, near the top, take it down a little bit, over to the right. Don't ask why, that's just where I standardly put them before I've checked anything. Let's have a listen. Let's start from here. Cool, so already that's sort of thickened that sound up a little bit. Let's try playing that sound and then messing around with the phaser and moving it. Let's wait until it gets to the middle. See? So you could do something like that. You could also automate this. Um, now, this is the LFO settings here. Now, an LFO is a low frequency oscillator, and that's kind of like adding automation to something, but it's you don't have to draw it in. So it'll be a waveform that just runs at the same tempo. Um, so let's turn that up, the amount. Again, let's put that little dot up here. The rate is how fast this wave affects the sound. So let's go for something quite fast for now, just so we can hear what's going on, and let's give it a listen. Uh, let's go here. Speed that up. Cool. So I tell you what, let's now, let's take this rate all the way down. So again, don't forget that's the speed. If you see anything in Hertz, it's usually the, the speed of something. It can be frequency as well. What am I talking about? It's frequency and it's speed. Frequency and speed are the same thing. I'll get into that later. Um, so let's automate this as well. Let's show automation. Right click on rate, show automation. We've got another little red line here, which you hover over it, you can see the numbers. And then, let's just do the exact same thing. Draw a nice line up here, oh, what have I done? Undo. Nice line up here, and let's see how that sounds. Sounding better every time. So now let's try adding a reverb. Pretty simple, this one. Um, the only major thing I like to change on the EQ is, not on the EQ, on the reverb is put it on high quality. And then the input processing as well, I like to take out the low, or put in a low cut, take out the high cut. So this section here, it, it changes the input into the reverb. So whatever sound you're putting in, this section affects that sound that way. This section over here affects what comes out of the reverb. Quite important to know. So let's put the wet about, yeah, dry wet about halfway through. And let's cut off just a little bit of the low end. Let's do a really big one so it's quite obvious what's going on. And let's have a listen just to the last bit. Nice. Let's do that again with a really long tail. Nice. So that smoothed out the ending of that sound as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how to do the white noise build up. Let's have a look at doing the white noise breakdown and it's the same, but in reverse. So we need to go to the auto filter, right click on the show automation thing on the frequency. And we're gonna switch this round. So the bottom one, we're gonna move up to the top and the top one, we're gonna move up to the bottom, move down to the bottom, sorry. Um, let's do the same for the rate here. Click on it, move that all the way to the top, this one all the way to the bottom, and let's have a listen to this now. This is going to produce the opposite sound, so instead of going, it's going to go, perfect example there. Let's have a listen. So you could use that really effectively on 
a breakdown or something like that. So you've come out of your main section of your track, you're break, bringing everything back down again, bringing the tension back down. That's always a good, really good thing to use. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the white noise um, one. Let's now take, let's turn off the reverb and the phaser. We might come back and use those later, but we'll turn them off for now. And then we're going to look at doing a synth build up. So it's a little bit different from the white noise as this one will go up in pitch instead of scanning through the frequency of the wave. So let's go back to our first oscillator and we're going to change this wave now just to a sign. You can choose almost any wave for this, it's up to you. I'll just start with a sign for a basic, basic sort of look at it. And then what we want to do is turn the pitch envelope on. So that's this section here. And this controls the pitch of the track. So pitch is the note and this allows you to sweep up through the note or down through the note, anything like that. So you want to make this into a ramp. This will li is literally a visual representation of where, how this is going to move through the pitch. So we're going to start right at the bottom here. It's going to end at the top. Let's have a listen to how that sounds now. Oh, and last thing, the pitch envelope, even though I've turned it on, it's not active because this is on 0%. So there's no pitch envelope. If I turn this up to 100, it's going to do exactly the same as this shape does here. If I turn it up to minus 100, you can probably guess it's going to do the opposite. So instead of going up, it'll go down. So let's do it up because we're doing the build ups. Let's take off the filter because we don't need that. So they're all turned off. And let's just have a listen and see how this sounds. Cool. All right, let's shorten this now. So we've got our simple upriser thing. You can hear how that sounds already. It's again another sort of build up tool, but let's make it a bit beefier and let's add some add some stuff to it. So let's take another oscillator, oscillator two here, B even. And let's crank that up and see how it sounds as we as we add the oscillator in. Let's maybe add another one, but we're gonna turn this coarse section here is the tuning of the oscillator. So this is note or octave tuning and then the fine tuning is a lot smaller intervals between the notes. So let's turn this one down to 0 0.5, let's turn it up and see how that sounds. Cool, we're getting there. Let's add the phaser back in. Not bad, but don't forget this rate here is all still automated for the other direction. So let's change that. Let's draw a line, a circle there. Let's take a circle down to there. You can see this ramp up and this will, again, this will increase the speed of the phaser as the thing progresses. So let's have a listen. Nice. That ends quite abruptly, so let's put the reverb back on. Let's take the decay time down a little bit. Nice. All right. Cool. And that's pretty much all your build up things. Let's go down to, let's do again the same. Jesus Christ. Let's do the opposite. Again, let's make a breakdown section and you can really easily do this just by taking this pitch envelope section here, turning it down to minus 100%. And then let's do the same with the rate automation on the phaser. So we're gonna, oh my God, why won't that thing go away? Let's take this down to the bottom, this one to the top. If I can grab it, why can't I grab it? Oh my God, annoying. There we go. All right, so now you can see a downwards ramp. Let's also do the same with the rate on the phaser. Oh my God, why is it doing this? Okay. There we go, we've got an upwards ramp now. Is that what I want? Is that what I want? Not quite. So the way you can remedy that being so high pitched is either turn the tuning down in here that'll be the easiest way to do it so let's just put that minus 24 
If you don't know much about the scales or anything like that, you're going to want to use this in sections of 12 for the octaves. So every 12th semitone is the same note, but higher. Let's have a listen now. Cool. And then we can also change the curve on that pitch bend. So this, let's do it like that, and it's going to start off high and it's going to quickly fall and then it's going to, as you go through, it's going to fall slower and slower and slower. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. Yeah, nice. All right, and I mean, that's pretty much it. You can do sort of, you can do some different stuff with this. So you could, let's try, ooh, let's use the auto pan. Put that over here, right at the end. Mm, now, it might be important to note here that all these things in the bottom, all your effects on top of your instrument, they run in order. So the sound will go through your phaser, then through the reverb, and then through the auto pan. Now, I want the reverb to come after the auto pan. You'll see why in a second. So let's put the auto pan here, turn the amount up. Phase. Now this is the relationship between the left and the right of the thing. So we want to have them both going at the same time because we're not going to use it to pan, we're going to use it to gate. So there you go, you can see here is a nice wave. Let's put that onto the sawtooth, sawtooth? Tooth wave. You can see why it's a spiky one. Let's set the sync here. This is the rate, so the same as in the phaser, but you can set this to match the tempo of your track. So let's do 16th notes. And I think that should do it. Let's have a listen. Cool. Let's try to go back to this and let's do a square. Um, so we've got the round shape here, you can see. Let's slow that down so you can see. We've got the round shape. If I go to the shape here, it's going to turn this into a square and you can see how when I adjust this. There you go. Let's have a listen now. Okay, the rate's wrong. So let's turn that rate back up to 16. <clears throat> one, one in 16. Good. All right. Let's, let's show you what happens when I take the auto pan to the other side of the reverb. So this auto pan will now affect the reverb. Have a listen. And then do it this way. Slight difference, but you can hear that the reverb is now on top of that auto pan effect. So let's move this back into a build up. So remember, all we need to do is take this pitch envelope, knock it up to 100, and have a listen. And for this, I want to have a bit of a steadier curve. So one thing that might be worth noting here is that this is not reaching the end of its cycle before the end of my note here. So you can either lengthen the note, but if you want your build-up to only last four bars, it's probably better to take your attack and let's move that attack a little bit shorter. Let's make it a little bit shorter and have a listen now. So you can hear now that's reached the top. So what we're going to do is now start working back the other way. Let's click the attack here. Oh, let's click on it there instead. And let's knock that across a few points. So let's put it up to seven, eight seconds. Not quite reaching the top, so we need to go shorter. Let's go to six seconds. about it. Now one last thing I want to do is show you how you can combine those two effects. So what I like to do, there's a couple of ways to do this but I'll show you what I think is the most effective and most practical way to do it. Now you're going to take your operator here, I want you to press Control and G. You can also right click, nope, no you can't. Let's just do Control and G. 
So now you can see that's inserted this into an instrument rack. So the operator's inside the instrument rack, everything else is on the outside of it. So let's click on this, let's go Control and D. Let's call this top one synth. And let's call this bottom one white for white noise. And then on the white one, I'm going to take the auto filter and I'm going to drag it inside the instrument rack here. Have a look. So that's inside that now. And that's only affecting the white noise. If you see, if I click on the synth, it's not there. White noise, it's there. Turn it on. And then we need to adjust this. So we go to the white noise. We need to take all these out. You can also turn these off using this. And now, let's go to white noise. Let's click on the frequency. Now the frequency should still be automated here. So let's do it in the right direction. Remember we want it going, oh my God. We want it going from the bottom up because we're doing a build up. And that should be about it. So let's listen to the white noise on its own. You can solo this here. And then let's listen to the synth on its own. Solo there. And then both together. Let's turn the synth down a little bit and let's turn the white noise up. And then try again. What else can we do to make that white noise stand out a little bit more? Let's put the auto pan just on the synth. So we've got the synth here, auto pan, drag that into inside the instrument rack. That's important that it goes inside that bit there. And let's have a listen now. Perfect. So that's both of them combined. Um, really simple sort of thing once you know how to do it. You can obviously tweak all these effects. I've really just play around with the knobs and try and see what works for you. And yeah, that's the first video down how to make a build up. My name's DJ Bosch. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. All that YouTuber business. <laughs> uh, and let's see what we can do with it. Ciao.